Welcome to another Affinity Photo tutorial. Today we're going to be creating some unique text uh, using textures and displacement. So this is what we're going to be recreating right here. First thing we need to do is open up a new file and we'll go ahead and make it 1920 by 1080. Let me zoom out a little bit so we can see what we're doing here. Now we need to place our background image that we're going to use as the texture. So I'll go to File and then Place and I have this red brick texture that I found on the internet. Let's go ahead and place that onto our canvas. So the very first thing we need to do is go ahead and rasterize and trim this. Next we need to create our text that we'll use. So let's grab the artistic text tool and we'll just type in the word bricks. Let's make it a chunkier font. Let's go with Arial Black. It's a nice big fat font and we can size it up quite a bit here because we're just going to fill this with the brick texture. So when we have it the size that we want, let's go ahead and make our texture the hot layer and then we'll command click on our text to create a selection. And then we will copy that, command C, paste it, command V, and then we'll deselect with command D. So now if we come back up here and turn our text off, you can see we really can't see anything, but what we've done is by turning off the base layer, we've created a new layer of just the text with the image on the inside of it. No big deal. We're going to duplicate this two more times. Command J, Command J. And now we're going to start adding in our displacement. So the very first thing we're going to do is turn on our background layer again so we can see it. And we'll start off by turning off our top two text layers. So all we have left is our bottom layer and our bottom text layer. Choose that bottom text layer and come down to the live filters and choose displace. Now here we can choose from either loading a map from an external file or we can use load a map from the layers beneath and that's exactly what we're going to do. So once we click that and load it, it's loaded into the text. Now we can go ahead and turn off our lower a layer here and so we can see just how much we're affecting this layer. So this one we kind of want it to be pretty uh, pretty distressed because it's going to be our lowest layer. All right so we we'll and do that get it around 20 pixels. We can always come in and change this later which we probably will. So now let's turn on our middle text layer, turn off our lower text layer and then turn on our texture again. So on our second or middle text layer, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go to Live Filters and Displace. And we will choose Load Map from Layer Beneath. Okay, so it's seeing that texture layer that's hot. Then we'll turn that off so we can see what we're doing to our text. And on this one, let's go the other direction. Let's go to a negative number there. All right, we'll accept that. And then finally, let's turn that off, turn our top most text layer on and our base layer on again and we're going to apply that displace texture or displace filter one more time and this one we're going to keep kind of mild let's just keep it at the base layer of 10 that'll be good and we will again load map from layer beneath and then if we turn off our texture we can see that we're affecting that there all right now what we're going to do is turn on all three of our text layers Starting with our bottom layer, let's go into Layer Effects and we're going to add in a bevel and emboss. And since this is the lowermost layer, we want it to go to the outside. So we're going to go with an outer and let's separate the radius and the depth on this one. Let's turn the radius up some and the depth up some and let's add in this flat profile. So that gives us some hard edges there and here we can kind of control how big that's going to be and how chunky. And that's looking pretty good right there. Again, we can come in later on and fix this to our heart's content. And on this very bottom layer, let's go ahead and add in our outer shadow. And we're going to turn it directly facing down there. And we'll turn the radius up, the offset up, and the intensity up, and the opacity. So we can see it. So it's actually coming down off the text. Bring that radius up a little bit more, offset a little bit more. Okay, 
and bring the radius down so it's a little sharper. So next we'll come to our second layer here and we're going to go to layer effects as well with that. Give it a bevel and emboss and on that we'll say with another outer and again by looking at our picture here we can see what we're doing here. We can separate the radius and depth. So we're trying to create some relief left and right and up and down. Uh, on this one I'm not going to enable a profile and I'm pretty happy with that right there. And then in our uppermost layer we're going to add in a bevel emboss but this time we're going to go with an inner and we'll separate the radius as well. And this one we can give it a profile. So you can see now it looks like the letters are kind of offset a little bit so we're kind of losing the effect that we want. But what we can do now is take and move these layers around so we can take our top one and move it over to the right a little bit. Take our second one, move it over to the left. So we're creating that broken look there. And again we can move these around to where we're kind of happy with them. And I think for the sake of the uh, tutorial this is pretty good right here. So once we have them in place where we want them, let's go ahead and group those. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a copy of the group. I'm going to duplicate it and turn off the bottom one. So if we need to go back in and make changes we can because we have all the original displacement and layer effects. But let's take this top one and rasterize and trim it. Now what we're going to do to extend our bottom out, let's go ahead and grab this rectangular marquee and we're just going to grab the very bottom of the brick itself and that shadow come all the way across and we're going to command C, copy that, command V, paste it in place and then command D, deselect it. So now that's sitting above the text. Let's go ahead and drag that. If we turn off our text we can see we just have that bottom selection there. So we'll turn our text back on. We'll drag this layer below the text and now by using our move tool we can come in here and drag it down some, drag it up some, get it where we want it and then once we're happy with the location we can go ahead and group those together. and then we can rasterize and trim that group. And once we've done that now we can come in and resize it and drop it where we want it. Same exact thing with the stone texture. So real quickly what we'll do here is we'll turn this off and we're going to place another texture into our canvas. Let's go to file and place and this time let's grab this, uh, got this concrete font it's a high resolution font and we'll do the same thing. We're just going to drag it in and drop it where we want it. First thing we need to do again is we need to rasterize and trim it. And then since we already have text created here let's bring that above and turn it back on. So let's just double click on that and we'll change it to uh, stone. And it's already sized up pretty much the way we want it. We'll leave it right there. And same exact thing. We're going to uh, make our texture hot and command click our text to create a selection. Command C to copy it. Command V to paste it. Command D to deselect. And then we can go ahead and turn off our text. And if we turn off our texture background we can see we've got the same exact thing going on here. So what I'm going to do here real quick to show you another thing that you can do. Let's add a slight Gaussian blur to this. Just to kind of roughen up that edge just a little bit. We'll go like with half a pixel and then we will rasterize and trim that. So now we're going to make two more copies of that. Command J, Command J. Turn on our texture and let's come down here to our bottommost text layer. Turn off the top two so we can see what we're doing. We're going to add a displacement filter to this. We're going to se select a load map from layer beneath. All right, and then turn off that layer so we can see what's going on here. And since it's stone, it probably doesn't need quite as much displacement. But again, this is all to taste. Get it where you want it. Then we will turn that one off. Turn on the next one. 
and our texture layer underneath it. So now we're going to add in a displacement to that as well. Load map from layer beneath. And we can turn off that texture layer so we can see what we're doing here. We'll go the opposite direction with this again. Yeah, I'll go with about maybe negative 15 or so. And then finally, we're going to turn on the uppermost text layer. Turn off that middle one. Turn on our texture one more time. Same thing. Come down here to displace. And load map from layer beneath. And we're just going to leave this one at 10. Same thing. And then let's turn off our bottom most layer. Turn on all our text layers so we can see what's going on. This time we'll start with the top one. And we'll come up here and we'll go to Layer Effects. We're going to go with a bevel and emboss. And remember, since this one is on top, we want an inner bevel to it. Separate radius and depth. Go maybe a slightly bigger radius. And then soften it up just a little bit there. Happy with that. That looks pretty good. Come down to our next layer. And this time we're going to go with a outer bevel and emboss. We'll separate our radius and depth. And we'll bring the radius up a little bit more. Bring our depth up a little bit more. We're going to bring in a profile to this. So it gives it a little more grit. And by looking at it, we can see it's kind of a little too much there. So we can bring the radius down a little bit. Kind of get it looking a little more distressed. Play with your depth a little bit. And then finally, our last one. Again, we're going to go with bevel and emboss, and we're going to go with an outer. And we'll add a profile to this as well. Separate our depth and our radius. Maybe go with a little bit more depth on this one. And what I like to do on this very bottom layer, again, we're going to add an outer shadow. We'll have point it straight down. And let's bring up the radius, the offset, and the intensity. And get it where we want to bring up the opacity so it's a little darker. And we'll bring the radius down so it's a little sharper as well, kind of like that. That's looking pretty good right there. Do the same thing here. We're going to take our three text layers and group them. And then we'll duplicate the group. So if we need to make changes later, we can. We'll turn off this lower group. Let's rasterize and trim this layer here. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to come here and grab our, our rectangular marquee selection. We're going to grab just the bottom of the letters there and the shadow. And we will Command C, copy, Command V, paste, Command D, deselect. And again, if we turn off our text layer, we can see that's all we've grabbed. Let's bring that layer below the stone text. Grab our Move tool. And let's stretch it out a little bit. Stretch it up a little bit, so... And then once we're happy with that, we can deselect. Now we can group these. And if we want, we can rasterize and trim them so that we can resize, put it where we want it, turn on our brick one, got it where we want it. And then just to see it up against a background, let's go ahead and throw something in there. We'll place this old paper texture behind it just to see what it looks like up against a textured background. We'll bring that in and drop it, and we'll bring that below all our text. And there you go. Very simple uh, way to create some stylized, unique texture text using real textures and just the displacement filter and some layer effects. If you like that, please hit the like button or think about subscribing. If you want to see more tutorials like this, I really appreciate you watching. Uh, until next time, peace. Talk to you later. Bye.